How's it? Hang loose. Welcome to Mongoose Max Hawaii. The Ten. <laughs> How's it? It's Sunday. It's uh, November um, 19th. Wow. It's 19th. <laughs> I'm able to check the, the date of the month. It's almost Turkey Day in the 22nd. No, no, that's that's the mm, that's the JFK date. Oh, 60 years ago. Oh, oh, do check out the thing. Um, I made the Who Shot J JFK. <laughs> I keep saying JR. Who Shot JR? I never watched that show, Dallas. But Who Shot JFK, I made the video. It's kind of long, but it's actually entertaining. I watched it a couple times. It's, it's here. See, I make it too long. People don't want to watch. It's like too long. The 22nd is Wednesday. I got a speech on Toastmasters. And I don't know, everyone's getting busy with holidays. It's like so much stuff going. My Toastmasters speech, I didn't know what to do. And I was what? stuck with having to get in there. I had to stuck with um, figuring out. Can you repeat? Thank you, Ghost Box. Oh, shh. That's my coffee. Uh, can you repeat? Okay, Ghost Box. Uh, well, Ghost Tube. It's free. Free app. So I had to figure out what I'm going to talk about in Toastmasters, and I came up with the idea of the Shroud of Turin and the burial cloth of Jesus with the image of his whipped up, stabbed, crucified body on it. And these are Toastmasters. They don't like jokes that are above, like, fourth grade. It's like, this is... Mm, and they're from Unity Church a lot, so it's not like... The Catholic miracle cloth of Jesus. It really is. And he poof resurrected and it became like imprinted on the image and science can't explain it. And ding, 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 this. Ah, uh, it's an interesting topic. What is this? But, um, I'm, I'm, I'm playing with my coffee. Okay. Mm. But today we are going to do old and devil. devil. It's a devil. We're gonna do old and new because this Bible actually does. It's kind of interesting, and I I read random out of the old, random out of the new, and no commentary. And sometimes it's a little, a little interesting, interesting. How, how, just a little bit. And um, and that's it. And why why is this not going? There, go. Jack. Jack. Yeah, that was the who shot Jack. That was the. It's a good video. Check it out. Anyways, let's, let's just do this one. Okay. Old and new. <sighs> I haven't done this for a while. In the name of the Lord, Father, and the Son, and the Spirit, the Sanctus, the Sanctus, the Spirit, the Sanctus, the Sanctus, the Spirit, the Sanctus, the Spirit, the Random. Old. I found my little thingy, too. Okay, here's the old. And light. Don't look at the light. Don't go into the light. This is First Chronicle. Oh, that might be kind of cool. I don't like it. You don't like it? Well, tough. <laughs> first, first Chronicle, Chapter 25. Temple Musicians. <laughs> David and the officers of the army, also set apart for the service of the sons of Asaph, and Herman, and of Jeduthun, who should prophesy with lyres, harps, and cymbals. The list of those who did the work and of their own duties was the sons of Asaphus, a bunch of people. Yay, they got together, the musicians. Oh, that's a commentary. Uh, new. Somewhere. It's gotta be rubric. Gotta be bad better. And what we got? <laughs> Every time. Uh, Matthew. Hmm. Matthew is a bunch of rubric. Don't leave. Hmm. Okay. Uh, Matthew chapter, where is that? 22? 41? 
the question about David's son. Now, while the Pharisees were gathered together, Jesus asked them this question. What do you think of the Messiah? Whose son is he? How? Shh. They said to him, the son of David. He said to them, how is it then that David, by the Spirit, calls him Lord, saying, The Lord said to my Lord, Sit at my right hand until I put your enemies under your feet. If David thus calls him Lord, how can he be his son? No one was able to give him an answer, for, nor from that did, they, did anyone dare to ask him any more questions. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. That's, that is one thing about the, the Pharisees try to trip him up with questions all the time. And he's always got this like, Jesus response. Oops, that's tough. Oh, so, um, what do we got in the vlog? Well, I told you some vlog stuff. It's, um, I got to get back on losing some weight. It's these, all these birthdays came up and then Halloween. And there's all, now Thanksgiving with all these baked good things are already coming out of the woodworks. It's like all about eating, so I gotta do healthy snacks. Yeah, what's up, Doc? Or something. I can do some more health walks. It's important for me to do that. And that's my vlog. As far as the news, it's mostly about travel. My friend Michael's traveling. He, he borrowed my suitcase and he couldn't take it on the plane because of a certain airline. I don't know if the spirit will move me to mention their name. I don't think I should name the name, but it's like, you know, smells like teen um, airlines. <laughs> Charge 90. I, can't speak. I can speak. Okay, I'll speak for you. $90 for a check on luggage. So it's like, uh, and the thing was kind of falling apart a little bit. So my old sentimental big old suitcase. I traveled Montana, uh, Arizona. I traveled um, Texas with that. I had to be left in Las Vegas. Like, I was like, oh, don't worry. The, the, the wheels coming up, coming off. I'm like, no, the wheels wasn't coming off. The wheels come come on. Please listen. Please listen. I actually, when I went to Arizona to visit my friend's home state. We w traveled around Arizona to check out Arizona from someone who lives there and looked at ghost towns. And when I came back, we went to these, um, uh, what are those? I don't know, there's some royals or whatever, the, the washes, the, where the, and they're like big dried riverbeds with, they have, they have floods too, so there's rocks, all these mineral rocks. I took a bunch of mineral rocks and wanted to bring them back to Hawaii, so I, put them in the suitcase so the whole suitcase at one point was practically filled with rocks <laughs> yes, a suitcase full of rocks and that very suitcase had to be abandoned in las vegas it never left las vegas <laughs> okay enough of that let's see a little bit of hawaii news just just a little bit okay um we're sharing the culture so apparently this thing called regenerative tourism is seen as the future of the visitor economy because everybody i mean it's tons of people here want the visitor tourist industry to be successful and make lots of money because it's mostly money for the state and big businesses here but sometimes local people get some of this you know and lahaina was a two billion dollar tourist industry regenerative i'm thinking i'm not even sure i tried to read the article but it's uh regenerating the hawaiian culture so a lot of local uh look i can i can blow the conch shell that i made the kind of you know wolf in basket and play the ukulele and wear this um you know it's, it's some of these people are able to cash in on that tourist dollar because that's really what hawaii's much all about cashing in in the tourist dollar not to be too blunt about it except i just was <laughs> so hulas and stuff like that and and maui really has to i mean i don't know how they can 
foolish, but they do concerts and they're doing this and that, and they're trying to get their feet back on uh, uh, regular ground that's not burnt up with ashes. That's half crematorium. Protesters show up for Marcos event. Oh my God! Okay, um, uh, nobody likes Marcos. <laughs> this, is, this is one of these things. In the Philippines, there was Ferdinand Marcos and his wife Imelda. Reagan, President Reagan, loved the guy because it was the Philippines and he had to keep the Philippines, you know, General MacArthur. So Reagan made sweetheart deals with this guy, but he was a military dictator. And he it was like, look what it says here. Megaphones vocalized their anger and frustration of the justice that was denied friends and family in the Philippines who suffered, tortured, simply disappeared under the Marcos family decades-long dictatorship and it started in the 60s so yeah so he was already a dictator before um, Reagan was like hey man you're my friend <laughs> it was just all politics but um, okay so Marcos um, died in the, in the Philippines as an old man his wife had millions and millions of shoes they had a counter-revolution and they tried to take back the imperialist wealth and then everyone else is bored and tortured and they have this wealthy mansion and Marcos Milda had millions and millions of shoes well when he died he brought the body over to Hawaii and everyone had a Filipinos were like yeah and everyone else is like get that corpse out of here well his son whose name is Bong Bong Marcos Jr. <laughs> Bong Bong <laughs> is planning to show up to Hawaii. So Bong Bong is coming to Hawaii. Oh my God. What else is going on? Something else? Oh yeah, and the UH lost to Wyoming. <laughs> oh boy. The UH lost to Wyoming. The Wyoming... Ah! That, that is a safe penny. The US lost to, uh, to, <laughs> to, to the Wyoming Cowboys. And here they're going the cowboy way. A little bit like uh, Brokeback Mountain Cowboy. <laughs> Come on into the tent. <laughs> oh God! But they lost horribly, like 40, 42. Oh, it's in my little thingy. It's like 42 six. It, it's uh, oh my gosh! They they lost so badly. It's like, come on, you guys. What's up? Coach Timmy Chang. Timmy, Timmy. Annual drive. This and that. Quickly. Oh. Quickly, just, just relax. Okay. Remember back in the day, 1973, no relax is like, go down to the piers and go, hey, look, it's the bus. He told me. I can take the bus onto the boat and take the bus off of the boat. 30 new buses for the city system unloaded roll on, roll off cargo ship Lure Line. New vehicles replace the smoking, belching buses for overdue for retirement. So that's right. They used to have these buses that just had. It's just like diesel, a diesel chimney in the back. <laughs> behind it. It's like oh, 1973. Those buses were around for a while. Oh, you know, just I don't know. Annual drive. It's like all Turkey Day stuff going on. And millions, 1.7. No, not 1.7. Like 7.5 million people are gonna be going traveling. That's why I'd gotten my friend with my friend. <laughs> Tell you about that. He's traveling in, in the midst of this uh, uh, travel thing. And this is stuck? You've got to be kidding me. Close it. I can't close it. It's stuck. Okay, here we go. Rebounds like a power. Biden, you know, just visited his good buddy uh, prison. Well, at least he's keeping the door open. That's the thing. Uh, oh, here's a political cartoon about it. Your human rights abuses, Hong Kong, Tibet, cyberspace attacks, fentanyl, risky jet maneuvers, and oh yeah, COVID. You popped my balloon. I was going to surprise you. Julie? All right, let's, let's, let's just get some finger on the pulse here. Some, some, some nice political beauty. Here we have landowners cut the grass before it burns up. We have another wildfire. Hawaii needs to test the waters that are already polluted. And, sure. and Alawai is actually a kind of a cool uh, public resource. So keep them open so I can go swimming. It's like a, it's a, it's a, it's a tourist thing. But we're going to look at this one here, I guess. <coughs> we must minimize global warming. 
No one knows exactly how climate change will affect our state. However, one doesn't need to be a climate researcher to know the earth is warming, that droughts are becoming more okay, Julie, coming pop commonplace and that life on land and in the water is under duress. duress. It should be obvious to anyone who has observed these changes that Hawaii will not go unscathed as our shorelines recede and we become even more dependent on the other areas to supply the resources we need. That's what it's about shipping. At least that is what most reputable climate scientists and demographers are telling us. Many social media pundits. Is that me? I guess I'm a pundit. Social media disagree with these findings. I agree with your findings, by the way. And claim that human activity has nothing to do with climate change and human intervention cannot alter its course. They're just denying it for the views. If humanity does nothing to try to minimize the negative consequences of climate change, however, will future generations ever forgive us? Robert Griffin Makiki. Well, thank you, um, Robert, there for sharing your, uh, your nifty post. How do I get out of this? Here we go. Thank you for sharing there, Robert, with your, uh, uh, those, those social media pundits denying climate change. Will our future generations forgive us? Forgive us? Hell, man. We're, climate change is real. The seasons are all out of whack. And there's giant storms. Who does not miss the giant storms? There's cold fronts bending down. There'd be like the jet stream bending down. It's freezing. And people are going, how can you say it's global warming? I just went outside and got uh, a big snowball. It's like, yeah, you're in Florida. Figure that one out. <laughs> it's, it's, just a little degrees change and the whole climate and then things melt and then the water goes up and that's real. And um, anyone who denies it's just doing it for politics or likes and subscribes. <laughs> Goodbye. Aloha. You should say aloha. Okay, aloha. Aloha. Have a good time. It's going to be turkey day soon. Oh gosh. Oh, we're going to bake the turkey. Oh, they want to bake one turkey and Thanksgiving. Uh, Toastmasters, they want to cook a whole turkey. You want to complete that? Okay, I'm